So I invite my next speaker and uh, he is Muhammad Ali Shah and uh, he is an IIM graduate and he is uh, hugely popular in India he is a uh, international TED speaker and also he has worked on several uh, Bollywood movies and just I will talk about him not his background but he, he has already achieved yeah over to you Mr Shah Thank you very much Akanur uh, Rahman bhai thank you very much Cambridge University London University and thank you very much this eminent panel of speakers i would like to say adab to asif ahmed saab to wasim saab hello to professor michael short hello dr ananta how are you what an honor to meet you all over here excellent i will start the small little story and a small little illustration the first illustration would be i would request all of you just look at your camera lens the lens at the laptop phone ipad whatever you're using computer just at that lens focus there no else okay while you're looking at that lens why looking there tell me something around your surroundings which you can see which could be pink in color but don't look anywhere else just look at the lens only Okay now look around your surroundings uh, uh and tell me something which you could see which could be perhaps pink in color Okay very well so i see now very well uh, professor short thank you so professor michael short saw something very pink right like right lying right right next to him so the, the example i'm trying to make over here is when you are looking at the camera lens does it mean that the pink object that you saw just now was not close to you it still was it was yeah. there? out of focus sir it was out exactly. of focus exactly it was very much right next to you but you couldn't see it why because your focus was elsewhere your focus was was at the camera lens only when you looked around you made an effort you could see the pink thing which was right next to you actually very true yeah very true similarly ladies and gentlemen happiness joy success positivity everything that we desire from the universe is actually nowhere but around us only we fail to see it many a times something is so close to us but we we'll go out elsewhere looking for it there focus look around second illustration i would request all of you all of you as over here kindly join your hands and do this all of you very well okay now take out your two index fingers from here like this don't let them join huh don't let them join but they can just be a millimeter apart from each other now listen to me very very carefully the left finger is the north pole of a magnet and your right finger is the south pole of a magnet and both the magnetic charges are actually attracting each other Seem why you can also do this I can't see your hand Okay both the fingers are attracting very badly and they're coming together don't let them join don't let them join no 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 don't let them join yes yes they're attracting attracting yes now you can move you you put your hand apart Now have you heard this phrase is all in the mind Strength does not lie here but lies here As and when I told you all that the left finger and the right finger are both opposites of the charges of magnets and after I told you you believe what I was saying so you could actually feel a magnetic charge over here but there was no magnetic charge there because you believe in what i said 
Similarly, if a soothsayer or an astrologer or a palmist, with all respect to them and the work that they do, if he tells you, oh my goodness, you are going to have great health, very successful, very happy life. And if you believe in that, you will have a very successful, happy and a healthy life. If a soothsayer tells me, oh, what a beautiful hand, you are going to be very rich and very famous. And my mind will automatically start functioning in that direction. Now, I will explore the possibility who is rich and who is famous, perhaps maybe actors. So I'll pack my bags, move to LA, move to Hollywood, give auditions, struggle to be an actor. I might crack an audition and I might get success in that field. But is it because someone had predicted that's come true? Or is it my own efforts? When your mind starts believing in that, thoughts result in actions. And those actions get us results. And when we get those results, it's because of the power of positive thinking. We think well. A small story. A man was lost in a desert. He was hungry and tired and very thirsty. And God had granted him three wishes, which he didn't know of. So he wished in his mind, I wish there was an oasis over here. I wish there was greenery and I could drink some water. In no time, he discovers an oasis before him. He goes there, rests in the shade of this palm tree, eats dates, drinks water. He sees a pond of water in the desert. Goes for a dip in that as well. And he had a camel with him. He rests under, he and his camel rest under the shade of the palm tree. Then he wishes something else, something good to eat. He gets that as well. And now the third wish. Oh, I'm having such a good time. Tiger actually comes and eats me up. And a tiger actually came in a desert, mind you, and ate him up. A tiger didn't actually appear there. He imagined a tiger coming there, so he died of a heart attack. So which only goes to mean that all our thoughts would come true. Good thoughts and bad thoughts. A king told in his uh, kingdom that I would like to a uh, blacksmith or a goldsmith to make me a ring which would make a happy man sad and a sad man happy. So the blacksmith and the goldsmith both, they start juggling their minds. They go home. The goldsmith comes up with a brilliant idea the next day. He presents the king this wonderful ring. He says, Your Highness, if you wear this ring, I guarantee you, your spirits will dip. You'll become sad. Ah, oh, what is this ring made of? And he puts it on. Now the one of gold, silver, brass, some, some simple, cheap metal. He puts it on and the king actually becomes sad. The same ring is worn by a sad person. You are very happy. A simple ring. Well, the trick is, there were four golden words written on that ring. Golden words were, This too shall pass. Which means nothing remains permanent. And the king became upset, became sad. Similarly, this challenge that we all are going through right now, this pandemic, it will go through, it will, it will, it will get over. In 1918 to 1920, the Spanish flu broke out which had over a hundred million casualties. But ultimately, that span of time did pass through, right? But let me tell you one thing. Samuel Beckett wrote a play called Waiting for Godot, in which two men, Vladimir and Mr. Albert, keep waiting for Mr. Godot to arrive. They believe when Mr. Godot comes, he will solve the problems. The Godot never arrives. So I say, let us not wait for Mr. Godot to arrive to solve our problems. Let's make things happen. You know, 
I have given 16 TEDx talks out in my country as well. And what I have learned is TEDx is not about how good a speaker you are. Or, no, it's about ideas. Ideas worth spreading. It's for people who need a platform to spread their ideas, right? So, in mid-March, I was to travel to Egypt to deliver a talk of mine. 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. 15th March, I still remember the date. 3 p.m., 4 p.m. in that one hour, eight of my talks, international talks, got cancelled. I travelled with my talks. I was very upset. I was disheartened. My trip to Egypt is cancelled. Eight of my talks are cancelled. But as Jalaluddin Rumi's philosophy says, never grieve for anything that you lose. It comes back to you in a different form. And also, what you are seeking is seeking you. Just like the pink thing. So I said, okay. Now how do I convert this adversity into an opportunity. I had a mental block to technology yeah? and there's no other way forward. There's no way apart from technology and technology does not discriminate. There's no person's name, caste, creed, religion. It only recognizes capability. So I said, when I was serving in the army, I learned when the going is tough, Tough get going, yes. But now I said, I have a mental block of technology. I don't. I last year I missed out on a very prestigious talk in the West, outside my country, and they asked me, "Can you do a webinar for us? If you cannot come here, now oh, what is a seminar? I knew very well. I did not know what a webinar meant. Oh, very simple, sir. Just download the app from your Google Play. We'll send you the link, and you'll be connected to us straight away." Uh, not beyond me. I have a mental block of technology. I can't. And because of my stupidity, I missed out on giving a very prestigious talk in the West. So now I said, when the going is tough, the tough get online. And I downloaded these apps. Google Meet, WebEx, Zoom. And within two hours, well, two hours is that comes later on. It took me two days to break my mental block of technology. I learned about it. And after learning, within two hours, I was on paid webinars back to back as a motivational speaker. What eight talks that were cancelled? What trip to Egypt are you talking about? I've traveled the world, I've done a world tour in this pandemic. In these last four months, I have given over 1,200 talks. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me tell you one thing. My journey into heartbreak. You know, I'm a motivational speaker today because not because I perceive my viewers me to be smarter or more intelligent or more talented or wiser than any of them. No, certainly I, I certainly am not. I'm a motivational speaker today because I have perhaps made one of the most amount of mistakes in the world. And as they say, only fools learn from their own mistakes. Wise men learn from others. So I want people to learn from my mistakes. So that they don't repeat the mistakes I made. I had my first heartbreak when I was in class fifth. But it wasn't regards to anything else, but I couldn't clear the entrance test for Thun School, which my parents had registered me when I was three months old. It was a dream. My mother worked very hard with me, burned the midnight oil. And when I went for the exam, I did very well. I finished the exam in half the time. When I came out of the exam hall, I discovered that I had missed one half of the paper. I, which means I had only attempted 50 marks. So obviously the result was very obvious. In class seventh, I went up on stage. I forgot my lines. 
because the girl i had a crush on i suddenly happened to see her and that's about it everything went for a six i thought shivery face turned red i was in a boarding school i said thank you and i went and sat down now i had two choices before me either i cash my head and cry or i work on myself that hard and i become a master craftsman of the street in class 9 i taught my batch by the way but from behind i failed in class 9 i have actually seen my juniors become my batch mates my batch mates become my seniors and my seniors become my super seniors i had to repeat that year in class 10th i got a compartment exam in maths after class 12th i failed to clear the entrance test for the national defense academy in my graduation in my second year i'm not exaggerating i really mean this i don't know how that happened but i flunked in most of my subjects i feel the most important subject which is which you require to clear any entrance test around the world which is english i scored 1 out of 100 in english i'm not exaggerating i mean this i attempted for 100 marks shocking i know doctor and you're shocked i i could see your expression but you know but imagine and i am not exaggerating i've seen your ted talk oh thank you ma'am thank you i get you on thank you very much ma'am after my graduation i tried for the national school of drama nsd i tried for the nsd twice i failed both the times 2001 2002 i tried for jamia millia islamia mass communication i failed there as well but then i sat for the upsc exam which is supposed to be one of the toughest exams in the country i got through with flying colors when i went for my training to the academy we were told that we would be given crew cuts so early morning there was a pull up bar over there and you we were told you would be made to hang upside down when a baba will come the big garden scissor and he'll chop your head the whole night we were practicing to do pull ups the other way around hanging upside down next morning at 5:30 am out at the baba shop we were lined up Suddenly, a horrendous looking figure appeared with a very big garden scissor. He said, Oh God, that's it. But that was a gardener, it wasn't the barber. You were made to give, you were made to get haircuts in a very nice officer like fashion. And as you were going back running in threes in formation, you know, with discipline, there was a very senior army officer who had a very beautiful daughter. They were passing by. were crisp costing us i get to wish them morning sir morning ma'am and as the co senior wished them one of the mischievous gentlemen gets over there shouted guys the beauty and the beast and the senior army officer turned around come here you jokers come here Come on, guys! Go on your hands for push-ups, and we were on a hand doing push-ups. He said, "Now you better own up. Come on! Which of you dared to call my daughter a beast? Huh?" <laughs> so he said, "He's anyhow." So he skinned us up in the hot sun in Chennai for about an hour, and we went back for classes. In the academy of training, there was one particular test where I kept failing repeatedly. first attempt failed second attempt failed third attempt failed mid term break all the kids went home to enjoy their mid term break i didn't have permission to go home i stayed back in academy i practiced that test after practicing that test so hard fourth attempt obviously now i have practiced i failed once again point fifth attempt failed sixth attempt failed and the last and the final attempt to the mercy attempt the dhakka attempt the grace attempt i feel once again 
which means I kept failing consistently in this test. It was the marching test, so I was marched up to the commandant, like the president of a university. That so the commandant asked me, he read out my report card. Son, I see you are doing very well. You're doing very well, but there's one particular test. You've been failing consistently. What happened? I hope all well, well, all well with you. I told him, sir, when I came for my training. My father told me, son, do well in academy, make us proud. But remember, son, most importantly, always keep your performance consistent. And that is the reason for my consistent failure in this particular test. Halabat chap, yeah. Come on, make him pass. Come on. Give him push-ups, give him some extra punishments, but I want this joker to get to be passed tomorrow. And I don't know what happened after that. I was made to pass. But the most humiliating thing came when the passing out parade, when our graduation ceremony. I wasn't allowed to take part in the graduation ceremony. That's the passing out parade. Why? I had failed in this test repeatedly. So while I saw my course mates march, with, they reach the last step. That's called the Anthem Pug, the final step to become officers. 6 September 2003. I, my parents had come. My father was a general in the army, so very strict man. So he saw that happen, and I was hiding. I didn't want anyone to know that I am not taking part in the passing out parade. But you know what happened after that? Four and a half years later, on 26 January 2008, I led the Assam Rifles marching contingent at Rajpath, saluting the President of India. And of course, there was a chief guest from a different foreign country as well. And I did that parade with two fractured legs on heavy, a heavy dose of painkillers. And I had tremendous pain, shooting pain. I cannot tell you. We all have experienced pain. I am so sorry. I know it wasn't planned, but I am just tempted to show you a small 20 seconds video, if you permit, please. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, doing excellent. Shagamun yes, uh, yes, bhai. If you, if you, if you can share screen, if you, if you uh, YouTube Muhammad Ali Shah Republic Day Parade, that 20 second video will appear. I want to show that. Will be possible. Thank you, Dr. Anta. Thank you very much. You have to search here. Yeah. Just search it. Doesn't matter. Whenever, whenever it's ready. So I let the parade there after. Why? Because I could feel that I could do it. If you think you're beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win. A thing you cannot. The unique feature of the BSF use of cannons. We have the Assam Rifles Marching Contingent led by Major Mohammed Salute to the President, Major Muhammad Ali Shah, Sentinels of the Northeast. They have won three Ashok Chakras along with numerous other moments. Thank you very much. I know it wasn't planned and uh, very nice of you to have quickly reacted to it. And this was in this test, I failed six times repeatedly. I was humiliated. But I could make it happen. When this pandemic started, you know, I on one side I knew malls, cinema halls, theaters, restaurants, coffee shops, they were all having a tough time. Companies were making losses. They were contemplating of dehiring their employees or cutting down their salaries. On the other hand, I also knew of companies who were not just making profits. They were making multifold profits. Can you believe that in this pandemic? 
And which companies were these? Let me tell you. These were the digital companies, the online companies, and the pharma companies. The shares of Google Meet, Webex, Zoom went shot up multifolds overnight. And that's what I said. When the going gets tough, the tough get online. And as a speaker, as a motivational speaker, I said, "Let me now. Nothing is going to stop me." And the kind of business revenue income I could generate in this pandemic, the success I saw in this pandemic, motivating people worldwide. But that's not important. What is actually important is because I could bring myself to that position. As Alama Iqbal once said, "Khud ek akar bolan itna." Bolan it. हर तकदीर से पहले खुदा बंदे से खुद पूछे Stray animals in my locality. So I basically converted an opportunity out of an adversity. Now people would ask me, "What about tradesmen? What about craftsmen? How do they work online?" I had a terrible mental block with technology. I failed repeatedly in school. Huh? I was that boy, not just a backbencher. Always unsure of himself, constantly living in self-doubt. Always asking himself, "Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Why is it that I don't have any friends? Why is it that nobody wants to be friends with me? What is wrong with me? I grew up in a boarding school away from family. No one to speak to. No emotional support. Feeling miserably. But that same boy." Forgot his line on stage. Today has been around the world with his talks. Has sixteen TEDx talks to his credit internationally. The same boy who failed repeatedly. I told you in class nine that topped my batch. Went and went to IIM Calcutta and got the topmost placement on campus. I believe anybody in life who has made it big, anyone, take example of anyone, have all started small from somewhere. No one has become big overnight. I started my journey as a small boy doing odd jobs, earning pocket money for my college fees, running around errands. I joined a call center in the year 2001 when I didn't when I failed the entrance test for the national school drama. But by the year 2013, I had not just done five years in the army and a management diploma from an IIM, but I rose to become a CEO of a company in the year 2013. I left it all up, went to Mumbai, and met Vishal Bhardwaj, who was making a film called Heather, Hamlet in Kashmir. I, he gave me a very good role in Heather. I'm very grateful to him. That led on to further other roles. I am not greedy for recognition, or fame, or money, or glamour, or glitter. Because I believe all that glitter is not gold. I am a craftsman. Recently on Z5, a film of mine released called Yara, and a web series called Avroot. I could make that happen despite everyone trying to pin me down, despite being teased, bullied in school. All the time. So my mantra was: when things go wrong, as they sometimes do, when the road you are trudging seems all uphill, and the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but <laughs> have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must. Don't you quit? See, life is queer. This twists and turns, and many of us sometimes learn. Many a person turns about, and he might have won. And he 
is stuck it out wait so the pain seems slow you may win with another blow often the struggler is given up when he might have captured the victor's cup success is failure turned inside out the silver tent in the clouds of doubt so stick to the fight when your heart is set and thanks him first it's not fit and i said i have got it don't quit the tide is always for us to learn don't quit over doubt and questions for this something you will learn don't quit the night stock is to be just to utter dawn don't quit when you run the furthest for the coldest almost on Don't quit with the hill is steepest where your goal is almost die. Don't quit for you're not a failure unless and until you fail to try. Shah Karun Bhai, thank you very much. You know, last year Shah Karun Bhai had invited me over to Cambridge University, and due to unforeseen circumstances, it didn't really work out. Yeah. But as I quoted Jal Jaluddin Rumi's philosophy, that it comes back to you in a different form. Yeah. And here I am on 5th September, which is Teachers Day in India, speaking at the prestigious Cambridge University, the prestigious London University, in front of you, eminent panelists. I couldn't have asked for a greater honor than this. Like I would what? like to Mizarida. conclude by reciting a small passage. Thank you very much, Bhai. Thank you oh, very please. much. You are a thorough gentleman, I must say. The, uh, I would like to conclude by saying this. This is coming from the boy who forgot his line on stage when he saw the girl he had a crush on. Huh? Thank you, Doctor Anta, ma'am. Thank you very much. So the lines are you have to concentrate very hard. Huh? It's a very complicating secret, actually. The secret is that I am my own grandpa. <laughs> Surprised? I am my own grandpa. It sounds funny, I know, but really, so I am my own grandpa. Let me explain to you how. Many, many years ago, when I was twenty-three, I was married to a widow who was as pretty as could be. Now, this widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair so red. And the father fell in love with her, and soon the two were wed. Now, this made my dad, my son-in-law. And gave my very life for my daughter. Now became my mother. Since she became my father's wife, not a complicated matter, though it brought me joy. I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. Now this little baby of mine then became a brother-in-law to dad, and so became my uncle. For it made me very sad. My uncle, then dad made him the brother of the widow's grown-up daughter, who, of course, by now was my stepmother. My father's wife then had a son who kept them on the run, and he became my grandchild, for he was my stepmother's son. Ah, my wife is now my stepmother's mother. It makes me blue because although she is my wife, she is my grandmother too. Now, if my wife is my grandmother, then obviously I am her grandchild. And every time I think of this, by God, it nearly drives me wild. But now I have become the strangest case you ever saw. As husband of my own grandma, I am my own grandpa. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Wonderful Thank speaking you. to you and honor. Thank you very much, Akanun Bhai, yeah. for inviting me over. Yeah. Such Thank a huge honor. Much. Great Thank talk. Thanks. Very much. Yeah. Great. And uh, that's why he's very much popular in India. So I will just email you his uh, YouTube channels also. And-